be the mitochondrion. And now we're up on back to eight. Eight refers to the following diagram of a typical plant cell. Uh, which of the labeled part is not found in an animal cell? Now that label part is going to be number two there, the chloroplast. All right, so number one is going to be the mitochondria, but number two is going to be the chloroplast. So the chloroplast is not found in an animal cell. Number nine, plant cells do not burst when placed in water because we chose B, plant cells are surrounded by cellulose cell walls. Hi, welcome to CSET Biology, the cover page. Today we'll be going through the June 2012 Biology Pass paper, and we're going to be looking at paper one. I will be providing you answers and explanation that will bring you closer to your one in biology, even with the COVID pandemic. Now, this paper came to me with some of the questions answered, so you might see me changing some and making uh, different choices as we go through the paper. Let's go. Question number one. Which of the following is a correct sequence of feeding relationships in a food chain? Now, we go for B because a food chain usually begins with a producer followed by the herbivore, and then you go to the carnivore, that sort of a thing. So B we went with. Now, the other question, number two, which of the following are involved in the cycling of nutrients in nature? Now, we went for C, uh, bacteria, and, of course, earthworm. Those are familiar to you. We think that plants will go deep into the soil and pull that nutrients up, and then it will get back to the top of the soil via the leaf falling out from the tree. Uh, for CSEC, we chose C. But beyond CSEC, we would look at human to say that human is also responsible for the cycling of nutrient. But for CSEC, we think that it would be most appropriate to choose C. You can tell us what you think in the comments. Now, for three, it refers to the following list. Number of legs, body temperature, shape of the body, type of body covering. The dead remains of a previously unknown animal are found in a forest. Which of the features listed above could be used to classify the animal? Now, we chose C. The animal is already dead, so you wouldn't be able to get a temperature. We move on to four. Four refers to the relationship between the following pair of organisms, barnacle and shark, back. Uh, shark and man, man and uh, malaria, protozoa. Now, pretty much you could use the elimination method to answer to this one. So let us go with man and malaria. We know that that's a parasitic relationship. If we were supposed to look at shark and man, we know that that is a predatory relationship. So we are pretty much at B because barnacle is going to be a commensal relationship. Now we're at five. Which of the following statement about food chain is true? We chose A, energy from the sun is transferred from one organism to the subsequent organism. Uh, we understand that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It pretty much moved from one form to another. So it was easy to choose uh, A there. Six. Which of the following is not true about decomposer? Which was B? They reproduce faster in low, low temperature. That is not true. You will relate to you having something in the refrigerator. It won't, get, uh, it won't become spoiled as easily as if you were supposed to have it out in a higher temperature. For seven, which of the following organelles is the site of aerobic respiration? That textbook is going to be the mitochondrion. And now we're up on back to eight. Eight refers to the following diagram of a typical plant cell. Uh, which 
of the labeled part is not found in an animal cell. Now that labeled part is going to be number two there, the chloroplast. All right, so number one is going to be the mitochondria, but number two is going to be the chloroplast. So the chloroplast is not found in an animal cell. Number nine, plant cells do not burst when placed in water because we chose B, plant cells are surrounded by cellulose cell walls. And that makes it very rigid, so it doesn't burst as would the animal cell. So we are up to question number 10. Which of the following combination correctly show a gas that is a raw material and a gas that is a product of photosynthesis? Now, raw material, the raw material for photosynthesis is always going to be water and carbon dioxide, and then the product is going to be uh, glucose, oxygen, uh, water, so for this particular question, we're going to be choosing raw material to be carbon dioxide and the product to be oxygen. Question number 11, which of the following are not autotrophs? Autotrophs make their own food. So here, uh, fungi would not be an autotroph because the fungi would be feeding via its hyphae. Number 12, which of the following occur as a result of a deficiency of nitrogen in plants? Now, here you'll see we x out A. That was what we got as answer. It says yellowing of all the leaf of a plant. We think that by excretion, normally, the all leaf will become yellow and fall off as they age. So we thought that this would not have been the best answer. So we chose B, stunted growth with chloratic plant with reduced yield. Chloratic there meaning yellow, not a leaf because it just cannot have enough chlorophyll. So we went for B for the answer for number 12. Now looking at the food test here in question number 13, it refers to the table below which shows the observation when a food was tested using different reagents. Now, here we have the test and the observation. Now, iodine tested and we got a blue-black positive color. It suggests that starch is there. Sodium hydroxide with copper sulfate, the buric reagent, we got purple. This suggests that there was protein there. And we used the Benedict solution or Felin solution. We got no color change, so there is no reducing sugar. So we went with a as the answer, uh, starch was present, and of course, protein. Then we go to question number 14. Which of the following options is a function of hydrochloric acid in the stomach? Uh, we chose uh, providing a medium for pepsin. You would agree with us that pepsin needed this acidic environment in order to function in the, the stomach. That's where it's found. Question number 15. Refers to the following apparatus used in an investigation. There we have a thermometer. You, you can see it well outlined. What we're going to be looking at. Make sure in your exam you pay attention to the labeling on this diagram. The initial temperature of the beans was noted and readings were taken at regular interval twice daily for four days. The data obtained were used to plot the graph below. Now let's look at the graph. Good. There we have. Over time, we find that temperature was increasing, then temperature started falling. Now, the increase in temperature in the vessel is best explained by the fact that the seeds are using their food store. Now, using their food store here, our interpretation is that respiration is taking place and as such, we're having a rise in the temperature. Question number 16. Which of the following is not a reason for placing green plants in an aquarium? We chose C because we don't place a plant in, a, in an aquarium to remove the chlorine. But a plant, of course, could provide food, could, of course, provide oxygen, 
and it could remove waste if we had carbon dioxide there to be removed. So, of course, but not chlorine. So, number 17, we chose D. The question reads, which of the following characteristics is not a feature of a respiratory sur surface? You would agree that a respiratory surface is never thick, cannot be thick, but all the others are indeed true. Question number 18, the reactants of aerobic respiration are so we are most time as far as i know the reactants are going to be on the left so we're going to be reacting glucose with oxygen the condition there is the enzyme pretty much in the mitochondria we're going to be producing some energy carbon dioxide and of course water so we chose b to be the answer for question number 18. question number 19 the amoeba obtain all the oxygen it needs by diffusion via its cell membrane, while a human need to have special respiratory surface for this purpose. The best reason for this difference is that D was the answer chosen. Now, why we chose D, we looked at the surface area to volume ratio. The human, human surface area to volume ratio is small for diffusion to be efficient. And what that means, if you were supposed to look at the amoeba, it's pretty much flat like a sheet of paper. So it's very easy for that oxygen, that oxygen to pass through. But when you look at a human being so compact, so compact, the volume, the volume ratio to is pretty much small because you'd find that if we were supposed to flatten ourselves out like the amoeba, we'd really be able to use the oxygen. But because we can't flatten ourselves like that, the human surface air to volume ratio is considered to be small for diffusion to take place, right? Question number 20. Which of the following features is most responsible for the efficient uptake of oxygen by red blood cells. Of course, it's a this shape um, that causes it to be able to take up the oxygen pretty readily. Question number 21, which of the following plant does not have a modified vegetative organ or vegetative storage organ? And that, of course, is going to be the mango because the vegetative storage organ is most time associated with those plants we reproduce asexually. Of course, carrot is not among the group, but there we have ginger and we have a potato. So our answer for question 21 is going to be C. Question 22, mineral salts in plants are transported mainly through the xylem vessel. So we do agree on D. Let's move on down. Now, question number three, which of the following is not a form of excretion in plants? Carbon dioxide diffusing in through the stomata. Now, so you understand that this is not pretty much uh, excretion. The carbon dioxide getting in there to enhance or to enable that process of photosynthesis. Now, 24, which of the following is not an excretory product in humans? Of course, undigested food, and if I'm allowed to say feces, of course, is not uh, an excretory product in human. It's pretty much undigested food. So pretty much other than saying feces here, they are using undigested food. So remember, feces is not an excretory product. So to the answer here is D because of that explanation there. Now, we're looking at the kidney. Question 25 to 26 refers to the following diagram of a mammalian kidney. Uh, there we have it nicely labeled. But our answer here, it asks us which, in which part of the kidney is a loop of Enli located. And we think it is B right here in the medulla. So that's where we think it would be located. Now, into which structure... Is urine emptied? Uh, we're thinking that's going to be C. Uh, pretty much that's the pelvis. That's where we think that the urine will be emptied. Now from 23, oh, we're at 26. Now we're going down to 26. 
27. Now, 27 is a little tricky because if we were supposed to look at this paper well, the fact that the hand is bent, then the muscle would have looked like this and not like this. But again, we have to look at something else that really stands out. The attachment of the tricep would not be here. The attachment of the bicep would not be there. So that ruled this out totally, which brings us to A, which has the correct attachment for both the, for both the bicep and tricep. All right? So A is our answer for question number 27. And questions 27, it, it read, or it reads, uh, which, of a, which of a muscle below, um, sorry, which of a muscle bone attachment shown above is accurate? So now we are looking at the attachment, so we have to pay attention to this area here and not pretty much the size of the muscle, all right? Now, the main function of cartilage at the end of a bone is to reduce friction. So we chose C. Question number 29. Movement is important to the survival of plant because it ensures that one can find food, two, Grows towards light. Three, grows towards water. Four, can respire. The answer there is C. The plant would need movement in order for to reach the sunlight and to get water. All right, so we move on now to question number 30. Now, which type of vertebra is shown above it is the lumbar and you can find this diagram in your textbook question number 31 refers to the following sequence of events that occur when a student reacts to to touching a hot object by withdrawing her hand all right so we have hot object pain effector response now, the receptor is the sensory ending in the skin. All right? So the receptor is the sensory ending in the skin that is going to be picking up that information and transporting it to the CNS, central nervous system. All right, so we move away from question 31, and we are at question number 32. A nice practical question here. It refers to the following results of an investigation of how wood lice respond to light and moisture. Very important to take note, light and moisture. The results show the number of wood lice that move to varying conditions, light, dark, moist, and dry. And there we have the numbers right in front of us. We chose B to be the answer. Uh, ensure, it pretty much ensure, the question asks, is, uh, the above responses are important to the wood lice in order to ensure that they do not become dehydrated. In some paper, you might be see desiccated, drying out. Uh, you might see the, um, the, the, a part of this experiment, you might see the silica gel being used, and the silica gel is definitely used to remove moisture. So our answer for question 32 is going to be B. Question 33, this one was not so difficult. Which of the following controls the amount of light that enters the eye? Now we have a radial muscle in the iris, and we have a circular muscle in the iris. So we chose A to be the answer, as the lens has nothing to do with controlling light entering the eye. So our answer for 33 is going to be A. Now we're going to be looking at question 34. Which of the following diagram correctly represents the pathway of transmission of an impulse for a spinal reflex? Now we want to ensure that we have a good grasp of the neuron. 
you want to ensure that you understand what's happening here, sensory neuron connector, neuron motor, neuron, that type of thing. So you want to have an appreciation of the flow of information here. Look at the direction that the information is flowing. Now, at no point should the information be flowing in the same direction. So we chose C, information coming here, sensory neuron, connector neuron, then we have the motor neuron and the effect of pretty much making the change. So C is the answer there for us. Now 35, which hormone cause a person to show superhuman or enhanced strength in an emergency situation? Now if you are from the Caribbean or probably from Jamaica, you would have heard the expression, when trouble take you, fitness should fit you. And in science, we explain that as the hormone adrenaline that would have caused that extra strength or that superhuman uh, power. So your answer there, adrenaline B. 36, which of the following functions of the skin is an example of homostasis? Now, homostasis is maintaining of a constant internal environment. And here, the maintenance of body temperature is what we chose. So it's going to be D. Now, this is a mathematical question for question 37. Refers to the following simple experiment carried out by a student to investigate growth in corn ceiling. After three days, the results were as followed as follows let's look at it now all we need to do here what is the average in height in centimeters si unit of a corn ceiling during the three days so we need to add up all this height here and then we are going to be measuring it by the number sample or the number um number of days so 10 here so plant one, plant two, plant three, plant four, plant five. So we just look at these growth, divide by 10, and we would end up with the answer 2.25. That's B. All right, so we had 10 plants there. All right, question number 38 refers to the following diagram, which shows the growth of a plant after a few days in sunlight. Now, your question is, the stem at Q grows upward because we chose D, axin accumulated on the lower side of the shoot. You'll see this here. For some reason, the sun acting on this area here would cause the axin to go there. Or one might say gravity. And as such, a plant, the grab, um, axin enhances the growth of the plant. So there's more axin here. So it causes this side of the plant to grow more. As such, a plant turns up into here. All right, so we go to question 39. Now, which of the following sequence of events is correct? We chose C. What we're going to be having, we're going to be having copulation first. Then we're going to be having fertilization. Then implantation to gestation all right that's an easy one that's textbook uh, 40 the reproduction of the amoeba by binary fission is an example of a sexual reproduction because a two offsprings are produced by one parent remember a sexual reproduction includes pretty much uh, the production of offspring by using a part of the parent to produce an identical offspring. Question 41, which of the following involves the process of asexual reproduction? Asexual. So asexual, again, we are using a part of the plant, so it's going to be vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagation. So your answer there is C. Question 42 is a textbook question. Uh, your answer there is going to be A, fertilization. The most appropriate heading for this diagram is fertilization. Question 43. 
which of the following comparison of a male and female reproductive system is incorrect? So the test is to ovary. That sounds wonderful to me. Sperm to egg, wonderful to me. Uh, sperm duct to fallopian tube, wonderful. So by default, method of elimination would go with glands and uterus. So B, we chose to be the answer. Now let's look at question 44. Contraception is used primarily to limit the size of the family. Uh, most women would be using some form of contraceptive or persons who are engaged in that sort of activity would be using some form of contraceptive. And the main reason for using this is to ensure that we limit the size of our family, uh, limit the growth of the population, not so much for uh, the protection of sexually transmitted disease. That is something to itself. Now, 45, which of the following statement confirms that a coconut is a fruit. One other thing we'll remember about a fruit is that a fruit has pretty much a three part, a exocarp, a mesocarp, and a, a endocarp, and all together called a pericarp. So we chose D, it as a three layered pericarp. So D is the answer for question 45. 46. As a result of mitosis, each daughter cell has the same number of chromosomes as the parent. And this is another textbook. Um, had it been meiosis, it would have been the other way around. But for 46, your answer is going to be B. For 47, in which of the following does meiosis occur? Which of the testes uh, of a mammal? And again, this is textbook um, of the number of uh, chromosomes would be passed on to the offspring. All right, now we move on down. So the answer there is for C, for 47. So we are going down now to 48. And in 48, it refers to the table which shows the number of brown and green grasshoppers found in equal areas of dry and green, respectively. Now, we have brown grasshoppers, green grasshoppers, and we looked at the, the dry grass. So we had, in the dry grass, we had 19 brown grasshoppers. In the dry grass, we had six green grasshoppers. In the green grass, we had eight brown grasshoppers and 25 green grasshoppers, we chose C for the answer. It says, which of the following best? And which of the following is the best explanation for these observations? And we think it was camouflage because it protects the grasshopper from predators. So C is your answer for 48. 49, we up on into genetics, and I did some crossing, crossing on this paper here based on what I thought the answer was. So 49 refers to the following option, which are four patterns of genetic inheritance. Now here I have the Punnett square being drawn. I draw it bo both sides, but here I put it in, and I try to map it pretty nicely. Now we think that the answer is D. For D, you are going to be getting the ratio, as is said in the question, uh, 1 to 2 to 1. So it's a what pattern will produce a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio in the phenotype. Now remember the phenotype is that which you can see. So here you are going to be having, uh, from this you are going to be having 1 red, 1 white. See double R here. So you are going to be having 1 red, 1 white, and of course 2 pink. All right, so there we end up with a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. Of course, you'd have to work it out using the heterozygous here to work it out in order to get the answer. This might be a little distracting. Now we're at question 50. Which of the following is not 
involved in natural selection. All right, natural selection, natural. There is nothing natural about grafting. So we go into the field and we graft a plant in order to get a desirable uh, plant, but it is not natural, it's artificial because of course we would have been doing that. So our answer there for 50 is going to be A. For 51, which of the following correctly list example of pathogenic, nutritional, deficiency, and physiological diseases? Now let's look at what's happening here. So we chose D. AIDS is clearly pathogenic. It's caused by a pathogen, a virus. Nutritional deficiency, anemia, lack of iron, that type of thing, deficiency. And physiological, something is not working, diabetes, the is let off longer on in your pancreas, it's not working, and as such you are having a diabetes. So our answer for 51 is going to be D. For 52, which of the following trigger the formation of blood clot? We chose A, the thrombocyte, uh, same thing that you would have called platelets. Uh, B is the red blood cell, C, white blood cell, and of course, D, white blood cell. So the only uh, favorable thing here would have been the thrombocytes, which are actually the platelets that would stimulate uh, blood clot. Through which of the following can natural immunity be obtained? By breast milk and through the placenta, so we chose C for 53. Your answer for 53 is going to be C. So we move on up to 54. 54, this is another nice one. Um, a vector is defined as an organism that, we chose D, transmit disease organism. Now you understand, though it is an organism, it could pretty much transmit an organism that has the disease. So a vector pretty much uh, transmit disease-causing agent, organism, that type of thing. All right, so here we go. So our answer for 54 is going to be D. For 55, it refers to the following method of disease treatment. Now we are looking at improved personal hygiene, isolation of persons, with the disease, and we're looking at good sanit sanit sanitary practices, for example, proper garbage disposal. We're looking at careful food preparation. Our answer is going to be B, because this pretty much guides the infectious disease. Now, in inherited disease, this wouldn't help you. All these safety methods here, this treatment control method wouldn't help. Um, cause of inadequate supply of nutrients, that's a deficiency disease, so this wouldn't help, a cause by malfunction of a body system, this again is physiological, so again it wouldn't help. So your answer for 55 is always going to be B. 56, fish, snail, water grass, and tadpoles living in, fresh water, in a freshwater pond may be described as. All right, good. Uh, we chose ecosystem. If you understand all these organisms interacting, it's pretty much a community. But when we put the water pond in the mix, then it becomes an ecosystem. So for 56, it's going to be C. We're moving on down to 57. 57, which of the following sampling method are used to estimate the distribution of species in species of organisms living in soil? Now, immediately we could eliminate the net and the quadrat. One might be thinking immediately about the tall grain funnel and the put or something like that. So here we can safely say bottles and jar, we chose D to be the answer. You are going to be using D to capture these organisms in the soil. Let's look at 58. Two soil components that are derived from the parent rock material are, B is our answer, sand and mineral salt. 
there is nothing else there to be chosen. Now we move on to question 59. Which of the following resource, resources is renewed through natural cycles? Of course, the forest. If we don't over-exploit the forest, it will naturally renew itself. So our answer there is going to be the forest. Just use it sustainably and it will renew itself. Question number 60, our final question. Which of the following practices does not help to conserve the environment? And that is going to be overgrazing because overgrazing is also overexploitation. And grazing here refers to our animal eating the grass and they can eat it like really, really low to a point where we start having sheet erosion. I might end up in gully, real erosion, that type of thing. So definitely for 60, our answer is A. For your multiple choice exam, please be reminded to read all questions thoroughly. Go through all the options that are available and use all the multiple choice skills that are available to answer your questions. We'll be making some available in one of our publications. So we do remind you, take some time and do your exam properly. Practice your questions and remember these questions can fall in any order should they be repeated in any exam. So make sure that you understand what was explained well. Thanks for watching another of our presentation. Please be reminded to like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell. Leave a comment below so we can respond and have a clear understanding of what you're thinking. Until next time, walk good. Today we'll be looking at the 2013 CSEC CXC Biology Pass Paper the multiple choice paper, which of course is paper number one. We will seek to answer and explain the questions as are outlined on the exam paper. So question number one, which of the following organism occupies a food trophic level in the food chain below? Now, each organism in a food chain represents a trophic level. That makes one, two, three, four. Hence, the fourth trophic level is going to be the arc, and your answer there is A. Number two, which of the following describes the relationship which involves two species such that one partner benefits while the other, though not benefiting, is an arm? I like to say that it's textbook. That is pretty much a definition are how we would define commensalism. So your answer there is going to be C, commensalism. Three, if all the trees in a large area of a forest were wiped out by a disease, what would be the most likely effect on the composition of the air? Now, our answer there is going to be D, the level of carbon dioxide would increase. Now, the level of carbon dioxide would increase in the area because trees are considered to be carbon sink. So what happens is that the trees would have been expected to be removing carbon dioxide from the air for photosynthesis and actually to store this carbon in the plant. So if we were supposed to remove the trees from the area, then the level of carbon dioxide in that particular area, the level of carbon dioxide would increase. On to question number four. Which of the following leaves does not have a net venation? Now, net venation is something that is pretty much confined to 
die-cut leaves. And all these leaves here, you can see they're having um, what we call net veneer. And of course, these small details are not drawn. Now, here we have B with parallel venation. The veins are running beside each other. So your answer here is going to be B, as the question says, not. Right? Does not have net venation. So that's a monocot leaf, like a cane, a grass, bamboo, that type of thing. So your answer is going to be B. B is the one there that does not have net venation. All right, move on down to question number five. And question number five is about a food web, right? A herbivore, carnivore, and omnivore, respectively. All right, herbivore. Let us not confuse ourselves. These are not herbivore. These are actually our producers. So our herbivore are going to be the first line here in most cases. So here we are going to be having our herbivores. So the herbivores are going to be the goat, the grasshopper, the caterpillar. And of course, our carnivore are going to be those that are eating the, the first set of animals here. And in this case, it's going to be your lizard, your chicken, your uh, hummingbird. Wow, as, as it were for this uh, food web. And then we want to look at our omnivore. Oh, wow, omnivore. Um, the, the, the thing about this food web, I would say, we would have been expecting a, a arrow to come from a, a plant and an animal to the omnivore. We are not having that. We have a grasshopper, goat, caterpillar here. So then you have to draw on prior knowledge to say that your, your omnivore, the organism that would be eating both plant and animal, all right, meat and plant, that would have been our human. So our answer here is going to be A, goat, lizard, man. So goat is your herbivore, lizard, carnivore, and man, of course, the omnivore. Let's move on to question number six. Question number six. The variation in cellular structure found in any complex organism is due to the process called, we could call it cell differentiation or cell specialization, where cells uh, actually grow into um, performing specific function as we would have had the nerve cell, the sperm cell, all of those would have been example of specialized cells. So our answer here is going to be D, specialization. Let's move on to question number seven. Question number seven, which of the following statement is not true about osmosis and diffusion? And of course, we're looking at not. You want to pay attention to the word not in your question, as it were, for this question. And we, I selected B, both process requires energy to move particles across a concentration gradient. Now, you'd understand that osmosis and diffusion, they are both um, types of passive transport, so there is no need for energy to move them. That is something that would have been confined to passive transport. So here, our answer is going to be B. Let's move right along to question number eight. Question number eight. When compared to a cheek cell, a muscle cell contains what? More mitochondria. And this is something that is typical for muscle and liver cells. So our answer here is going to be mitochondria. We could say this one is straight from the textbook. Um, the answer for question number eight is going to be mitochondria, and that's going to be C. So we're moving right on to question number nine. Question number nine, autotrophic nutrition does not occur in... All right, the first thing we need to know about autotrophic nutrition is that autotrophic nutrition is something that is confined to organisms that make their own food. Now, a moss would have some amount of chlorophyll. A tomato plant, the same blue-green algae, uh, would have been able to do pretty much the same thing. Well, however, if we look there at B, 
the zooplankton is actually a microscopic animal. So the animal would not be carrying out um, autotrophic nutrition. Of course, um, one might say you have chemosynthesis and photosynthesis. But in this case, our best answer, I think, would have been the zooplankton, which is a microscopic uh, a microscopic animal uh, living there in the water would be getting food from the water, all right, but not really making its own food. Question number 10. The following chemical equation is incomplete for photosynthesis. Which of the combinations shown below would accurately complete the equation? It's very important that we pay attention to this word, accurately. Now, right away, because you are so bright, I think you would up on to question, um, uh, suggestion D, which says carbon dioxide. And so because, of course, we need carbon dioxide X, and we're going to have, um, sorry, we are going to need carbon dioxide here, and we're going to need oxygen here. So your answer you would choose is carbon dioxide and oxygen. But then you have to look at the word accurate. This is a balanced equation. So it's going to be six carbon dioxide, and then we are going to have six oxygen being produced here for a balance equation so our answer the best choice here is going to be b and not d all right that's the explanation there uh accurately we have to look at that now item 11 refers to the following experiment a green and white variegated leaf is exposed to sunlight look at that sunlight exposed to sunlight for three hours and then tested for starch. So we're testing for starch. Uh, the results of a test are shown in the following diagram. Uh, here we have the, the, the leaves. Um, this area here was green and the other areas are definitely white. Now at the end of the experiment, the green area returned a blue-black color here. And uh, we know that blue-black is suggesting that there is starch. And then the white area took the color of the iodine. Now, let us see what's happening down here. Now, based on the experiment, which of the following factors are necessary for photosynthesis to take place? Now, if this green area here is showing that um, starch is present and the white area is saying that there is no starch present, the first thing we know is that chlorophyll is a part of our answer. However, all the suggestions here, here have uh, two answers, so we have to go for something else. So we have chlorophyll here, and uh, if we go back to the question, we would realize that sunlight is the other thing being sought. So our answer here is going to be light and chlorophyll. All right, so C is your answer for that particular question. Question number 12. Which of the following structure found in the leaf of a flowering plant contain chloroplasts? All right, so we're looking at the mesophyll layer. And you talk, um, the mesophyll layer has the spongy and polystyrene mesophyll. Then we have the epidermis, and we have the guard cell down the bottom, uh, stomata there, and we have the vein. So our most suitable answer is going to be the mesophyll layer and, of course, the guard cells. So our answer is going to be B. All right? That's where we would find the chloroplasts. Not in the vein and not the epidermis. You know the epidermis has that, um, is that protective layer above the palisade and mesophyll, so not there. All right? So... Uh, question number 13 refers to the following information. A man has poor night vision and his gums bleed whenever he brushes his teeth. Which two vitamins are most likely lacking in the diet? So we know already that for night blindness, it's going to be uh, vitamin A. And we're thinking now about scurvy. It is vitamin C. So our answer here is going to be C and A. Of course, your answer is going to be C. All right? And number 14, the part of a gut into which bile empties is the 
Alright, remember the gut is just another name for the alimentary canal. Alright, and they say that start from the buccal cavity to the to the anus or from the mouth to the anus. Alright, so that area is called the duodenum. The duodenum, and you'll see this in a diagram of the digestive system. So your answer here is D, the duodenum. Question number 15. Which of the following is an effect of nicotine found in cigarette smoke? All right. Uh, this one um, pretty easily is increase the heart rate. If these are like listed in your textbooks. It increases the heart rate. That is what uh, nicotine does. Uh, not so much uh, increase the beating of the cilia. No, it doesn't do that. Uh, reduce oxygen transport. That is something that is going to be confined to carbon monoxide, which is which, which the carbon monoxide itself um, adheres or form bond very easily with the hemoglobin, more readily than oxygen. So our answer here is going to be A for question 15. Question 16 refers to the following characteristics. Uh, thin wall surfaces, excellent blood supply, always moist, large surface here. This suggests to me we are talking here about a respiratory surface. Now, the characteristic describes structures that are most likely to be associated with diffusion of gases. So we talk about respiratory surfaces, respiratory area, and those would, of course, be um, associated with the diffusion of gases. So the answer there is A. Question number 17. All right, question number 17 refers to the following apparatus set up to test for the production of, for the products of aerobic respiration. So we're looking at a nice setup there. Soda lime there is supposed to remove uh, carbon dioxide so as to prevent poisoning. Um, had it been an animal. And what we want to know for 17, the solution in jar Z should be, the solution in jar Z should be calcium hydroxide lime water. That is because it is testing to see if carbon dioxide is produced during respiration. If you observe, observe here, there is a black cloth around this jar and there's a plant in it so it this reduces what would have or prevented or stopped the photosynthesis from taking place because there is no light however respiration is still taking place so of course we would expect some carbon dioxide uh, to be given off and as such it would come in this jar so we are looking to see if we are going to get that there and if carbon dioxide is present then it's going to turn this calcium hydroxide or lime water milky. So our answer there is C. Answer for 17 is C. Uh, 18. The right ventricle of the heart collects blood from the... Um, don't do that. Don't jump to vena cover. Pay attention to this part here. Not just right, but what part of the right? The ventricle. And above the ventricle, you are going to have the atrium. So your answer there is going to be C for 18. Then we go on to 19. Which of the following sets of characteristics is true for white blood cells? All right, so white cell, blood cells, they are different types of white blood cells. That's true. Uh, white blood cell, they have cell wall. No, that is something confined to plant cells. Uh, white blood cell, do they have nucleus? Yes, we have the lymphocyte and the phagocyte. Yes. So our answer here is going to be D for 19. Let's move on to question number 20. Um, item 20 refers to the following diagram, which shows cells from the stem of a plant. And obviously here, this is a phloem cell. 
and on the side of the fallen we are expecting to have the companion cell so the part label x is going to be the companion cell and so our answer there for 20 is going to be d question 21 under which of a following condition will the rate of transpiration in impatient plants be the highest all right so on a sunny day um, you're going to have your uh, stomata open. Um, outside of that, the whole effort of cooling the plant, then the water will be coming up into the plant. And the wind, of course, is going to cause those water uh, molecules, those particles to move much faster. So your answer here is going to be B for 21. Then we are going to up on over to 22. Which of the following organism has the least need for a transport system? Now we are, see, we are selecting um, the amoeba here. The amoeba, we looked at amoeba when we looked at microbes and when we looked at the need for a circulatory system at the start of it, um, circulatory system, you would find we're looking at the volume to surface area ratio that type of thing so here the amoeba does not require a complex uh, circulatory system because it's very small and uh, when you look at the uh, volume to surface area then you find that it would have been easy for diffusion to take place now 23 so the answer for 22 is going to be a as is selected there 23, which of the following storage organs characterize the Irish potato? All right, the Irish potato, don't mix this up now. The Irish potato is a stem tuber. So our answer is going to be D. While sweet potato is root tuber. So sweet potato, root tuber. Irish potato, stem tuber. All right? 24. Excretion is important in living organisms because metabolic waste products can poison living organisms. And we know that to be a fact, so we have to have excretion taking place or else we could be harmed by the waste product. If, it, if it's allowed to build up. So our answer for 24 is going to be D. 25, which of the following would not represent a form of excretion in plants? And remember the word not. All here else, C. So your answer is going to be C, water vapor diffused through the epidermis. And we spoke about the epidermis um, earlier. Just above the epidermis would have the waxy cuticle. So we would not have water really diffusing there. Uh, the bulk of that diffusion thing taking place through the stomata, which are concentrated on the lower side of a leaf. So 26, we are at now. 26 refers to the following diagram of the kidney tubule, or you want to call it the nephron, whichever one you want to call it. So the, the gamerulus filtrate in eye contains... Salt, water, urea, glucose. Now, of course, you would not have urine in it. So wherever there is urine, that is not true. You would find urine somewhere over here in the collecting duct, all right? So you wouldn't find urine over here. It would have been somewhere over here, if any at all, over here. All right, let's move on. 27. The main function of cartilage at the end of long bones is to reduce friction. Cartilage at the end of the bones, that's textbook again, is supposed to for, um, provide that cushion effect to reduce friction, prevent the bones from rubbing together. So our answer for 27, of course, is going to be B. Question number 28, which of the following correctly describes movement in plants? All right, so we're looking at movement in plant. 
No, if it's a growth movement, look at the comma in this um, suggestion. Growth movement is usually irreversible. So it's ir irreversible growth movement. All right? Now, I have seen this question um, in, on other papers. Pretty much the same question, but the answers are somewhat slightly different. Our answer here is going to be C for question 28. Let's move to question 29. Now, question 29 refers to the following diagram of a thoracic vertebra. Now, nervous tissue is found, of course, at 3. That is the area through which you would have all the nerve passing through, the spinal nerve passing through, all right? Um, this bone here happens to be one that really loves the paper, so it's always there. So our answer there is three. And again, this is a textbook. If you were supposed to look at the skeletal system, you would see this diagram, and it is straightforward there. All right, so item 30 refers to the following diagram of a longitudinal section through a human eye. Now, at what point is vision not possible? All right, just right here where the optic nerve leaves the eye. So here it's going to be D for your answer. All right? D for the answer there. And why D for that answer? Because right here is where you would find your rods, a high concentration of rods and cones around this area, not here, all right? 31 refers to the following diagram of germinating seedlings treated as shown. Now, the first one, tip cut off and replace on agar. All right, so agar is this thing with some amount of axin that will promote growth. Uh, tips cut off here, nothing is on it. So you understand the area that promotes growth is not there now once the tip is removed. Um, tip covered with aluminum foil. So it won't really respond to sunlight because it's a dark area. And then we have a plant that is not affected. All right? So we have light coming through one side. Now, at the end of one week, which ceiling would, would bend towards the light? So we know here that growth is still being promoted with the acre block. So this is definitely going to be one. And this plant is unaffected. So it's just going to bend on over like any plant, the sunflower, so on, bend towards the light. A piece, if you had a pea green plant in a cup and it was at the window, it would bend to the light. So our answer is going to be A for 31. Let's run on down to 32. Now, this can be a very tricky one, and you need to pay attention. It's a item 32 refers to the following diagram. Now, look at the diagram, the numbering 1, 3, 2. It's not 1, 2, 3. That's the first thing we need to look at, measurement and manipulation. All right? So we could identify this to mean a lot of things before we get to the question. We could call this the connector relay or intermediate neuron. We could call this here the motor neuron, and we could probably call this the sensory neuron. But you don't see the cell body on it, so we don't even want to go there with calling them those fancy names. Let us look at what they have. All right, so the number, the number structures are, let us look at one. One is coming from a muscle or going to a muscle. And going to muscle, going to a muscle or a gland, then we can think about the effector. So it's going to be one of these. All right, let us look at two. Um, this is coming from the skin of an hand. So this is definitely going to be what is picking up the information. So it's going to be our receptor. So here we have receptor. But the easiest to determine of all was three. Three was our relay, intermediate, or connector neuron, whichever one you want to call it. So our answer definitely is going to be D 
for 32. We move on to 33. 33. Which of the following are most likely to cause improper function of the eye? All right, so that is going to be weak ciliary muscles and two, lack of vitamin A. Now, the ciliary muscles, they are connected to the lens. So if they are weak, you understand that the lens will not be able to adjust as it should. So as such, you are going to have some problem with seeing distant or near object. One, one of them will be affected. All right, so your answer there is going to be A. 34, which of the following endocrine gland is found in the brain? Now, that is going to be the pituitary gland. It's the master gland. It's found, of course, they say up in the brain, the thyroid gland, in the neck, the adrenal gland, or over the kidney, that type of thing. All right, 35 refers to the following diagram of a vertical section through the skin. Uh, this diagram, you have to remember this diagram from the textbook. Which structure above will be involved in temperature regulation if there is a decrease in external temperature? All right, so your answer there is going to be B. All right, so the ear follicle there, if the answer, if the temperature was supposed to decrease, the ear follicle would need to be erect uh, to trap air over the skin. So that makes I one of your answer. And of course, uh, four, the blood vessels over there would of course sink deep into the skin uh, to conserve or to retain temperature to keep the body warm. So our answer here is going to be for 35, it's going to be B. For 36, a method of contraception that protects against both disease and pregnancy is the use of a condom. Every time it's going to be the use of a condom because pretty much it covers the male organ, thus forming a barrier between male and female reproductive organs. So B is going to be your answer for 36. For 37, the endocrine gland located in the neck produces the hormone thyroxine. Uh, that is correct because it's a thyroid gland that is in the neck. Uh, 38, which of the following is not a benefit of asexual reproduction in plants? Look at the word asexual. Uh, a wide variety of offspring. Now you talk about variety. Now var this variety is going to be confined to sexual reproduction. And here it is asexual. So our answer is going to be A as it is not. All right, we move on to 39. Now 39, refer 39 to 40 refers to the following diagram of a female reproductive system. Now, in answering item 39 to 40, match each item with one of the options above. Each option may be used once, more than once, or not at all. So for 39, which structure, the, the structure where the egg is fertilized. So 39 is trying to find out that where is the egg fertilized. So it's going to be A, the fallopian tube here. All right. B, the structure where the ova is produced. And it is right here, ovary, right there. That's where it is produced. So B is going to be the answer for 40. For 41. Seeds from the same pod were planted under the same condition. Oh, a lot of same here. 
the plant which grew from them appeared to be very similar. Mm. What is the most likely explanation for this occurrence? I chose A. The plant may have been self-pollinated. Now, if the plant is self-pollinated, um, we want to talk about conserving that hybrid quality. So because it is self-pollinated, more than likely, most of the offspring will somewhat look the same. There will be variation, but of course, they will look somewhat the same. All right, so our answer here is going to be A. Same mother and father, the children must have something in common. All right, 42. Nice one again. This one is from the textbook, probably straightforward. Which of the following fruit is dispersed by animal? All right, so if you look here, this has some hooks on it that would make um, it very easy to adhere to the clothing or the wool of animals, that type of thing. Here we have explosion. Uh, this could be wind, and this, could, of course, would be wind. But this is definitely animal, and this is our legume explosion. All right? So our answer here is going to be C for 42. Let's move on. 43. Which of the following are true about production of gametes? In human. All right, so I chose A. Let me see why did I. Uh, male produce more gametes than female. Yeah, there's way more sperms to one. Um, there's way more sp sperm being released at any time than would, of course, been an egg. And I chose three. Males produce gametes for a longer period of your life than their female. Yes, that is true. Um, in most cases, I think the oldest woman I have heard of, I'm not too sure, um, is about 78, having a child. And I think the youngest woman was from Costa Rica, about five year old. Um, she had a child. I think that is the, uh, the best, best memory I have of women giving birth, five year old to 78. And men tend to get kids even older than 78, you know. So I chose A for the answer for 43. 44. Which of the following statements about meiosis is not true? I chose D. Chromosome number is maintained. No, the chromosome number is not maintained. Once it is meiosis, the chromosome number is half. So you're going to get 23 from mom, 23 from dad, and not the 46 would move on as it would have been for mitosis. So here for 44, your answer is going to be D. For 45, an example of discontinuous variation. Now variation can either be continuous or discontinuous. For discontinuous variation, simply put, it is a yes or no case. It's either you can twist your tongue or you can't. It's either a cattle has an arm and it doesn't have an arm. For, for continuous variation, there is continuity. I like to say 1, 1.5, 1 1.6, 1 1.7, 1 1.8, that type of thing. But now we are looking at discontinuous variation. So I chose D the presence of iron in cattle. Now, the other answers, intelligence could be related to um, continuous. The size of a leaf, leaf have varying size, so it is going to be continuous. Now, eye color has varying uh, color, so again, that is going to be continuous. So the only answer, uh, only possible answer here for 45 is going to be D. 46. Now, which of the following terms refer to visible characteristics of living things? Visible, what you can see. Now, from genetics, we know that I like to talk about, if we're talking about the lettering, that part that you can't see, um, that form that causes you to look or have the particular characteristic, it's going to be the genotype. But that which you can see is going to be 
the phenotype. So you have brown eyes, dark skin, long hair, short hair, blue eyes, whatever. Phenotype is going to be your answer for 46. So the answer there is B. All right? So we move on down now to 47. 47 say, says a guinea pig rough coat is dominant to smooth coat. If two heterozygous rough coat guinea pigs mated, they would most likely produce. All right, good. So here we cross to heterozygous. And heterozygous, I just use T to represent. So I said big T, little t. Big T, little t, big T. So we have big T, little t. And I did the cross here. So here you can see what the results are. So this is recessive. So this one won't have rough coat. But inheritance of dominance, the rule states for inheritance of dominance, once the allele for the dominant trait is expressed, then the organism will come with that phenotype. So here we are having all these three. They are going to be having rough coat. So let us see what the, what's the answer I chose. So D, more rough coat offspring than smooth coat offspring. Good. So there we have only one smooth coat and three rough coats. So 47, your answer is D. 48. Human beings have been able to develop many species of plants and animals with beneficial characteristics. This process is called artificial selection. It is all artificial, and of course, we select what happens. Um, outside of that, it is going to be um, human beings have been able to develop many species of plants and animals with beneficial characteristics. Other than that, you are going to look at genetic engineering. But here, your best or most suitable answer is going to be A, artificial selection. We selected it. We did it. All right? Nothing about that is natural. Not fertilization. And, of course, it falls under genetics, but no. Not a good answer. All right, 49. In which of the following parts of a plant does the process of mitosis occur? Mitosis. So you know that mitosis is going to move on the diploid number of chromosomes, the full number. So it's not the phylum out, not the xylem out. Uh, region behind the root tip, uh, that is where you're going to have the bulk of the growth taking place. So D is going to be our answer, sorry, C is going to be our answer here. D, the region behind the root ear, the region behind the root ear is going to be the soil, so that is sort of out. So our best answer for 49 is going to be C. I did answer all the questions before I recorded this. All right, so item 50 to 51 refers to the following. All right, uh, A, B, C, D, host vector parasite pathogen. All right, in answering item 50 to 51, match the following statement to one of the options above. Each option may be used once, more than once, or not at all. An organism, an organism which causes a disease is a pathogen. Whatever organism that causes a disease, it's a pathogen. So the answer for 50 is going to be D. 51. An animal which carries disease causing organism but is not adversely affected by it is going to be B, a vector. And again, these are straightforward from your text. And 52. Which of the following are involved in the formation of blood clots? You'll remember platelets, all right? Platelets, they are involved in the formation of blood clots. And you'll find that in your textbook, if you look at circulation, there's a night, uh, or you look at uh, blood types and components of a blood, that type of thing you'd find. 
something on platelets telling you what they do. All right, 53. Which of the following method may help to reduce the spread of disease caused by insect vector? All right, this is a very tricky one. And I am going to explain to you how I arrived at my answer. Now, sterilization could mean two things here. It could mean sterilizing something as you would have sterilized the baby bottle with hot water, that type of thing. It could mean that. Sterilization could also mean, as they did sometime in Jamaica with the screwer, screwworm fly, you perform some modification on the organism so that it is not able to reproduce. So if it is not reproducing over some time, then the population will reduce or eventually be wiped out because they can't produce an offspring in order to continue their species. So sterilization, that is two-way. If the organism is wiped out, of course, it cannot spread the disease over time. Now, if you sterilize the bottles, and for example, a fly was carrying the pathogen, then once it is sterilized, then it would not spread. It would stop there. Let us move on to two, the use of insecticides. Now, if we use insecticide as we do with the fogging of the mosquitoes, right, then we'd have the mosquito dying and the chances of them passing on a disease to a human that would have um, significantly reduced. So insecticide could also help to stop the spread. Now, if you think about the use of disinfectants, whatever type, as it is for, for COVID now, they are saying um, use alcohol-based and that type of thing to treat with the COVID. But in all cases, uh, any public health um, organization will always tell you to practice proper hygiene. And a part of practicing proper hygiene is to ensure that you're, you are disinfecting the area, you are keeping the area clean and sterile, that type of thing. So because of that, all these three to me would have been a, a good ways to stop the spread of disease caused by an insect vector. All right? So to just, to just actually use insecticide, that is just one way, I think. So I don't think that B would have been the best answer. And I think, of course, uh, 3 has a space therein. So D, I chose D for 53. Now, if you have some other reason, feel free to leave it in the comment. We can discuss and see your view as it relates to question 53. Remember, you can always leave your suggestion, whatever they are, in the comments, and I'll definitely uh, respond. 54. It is believed that AIDS is not transmitted by sharing food with an infected person. No. AIDS is not transmitted like that. The most suitable answer here is going to be B. Now, persons are going to say that but a woman get pregnant and when she gives birth, the baby does not have AIDS and that type of thing. But it is also true that um, the HIV from the mother can be trans um, transferred from the mother to the fetus through the placenta. That is a well-known fact. You could research that on Google and you'd see that that can happen. So our best answer here is going to be B. At 55, you can reduce your likelihood of getting a non-communicable disease by cha changing risk factors that relate to your lifestyle. These are non-communicable. So you don't really get these from people. All right? So if you change your lifestyle, there are some disease, the non-communicable disease, that it is likely that you will not be um, affected like someone who um, chooses not to change the lifestyle. But a lifestyle change here at 55 would answer this question nicely. So our answer for 55 is going to be C. 56. 
which of the following provides the best example of an ecological community? Now, a community, we remember, we talk about cells, tissue, organ, organ system, and then we had organism, and then after organism, what we had after organism, we had population, and I think after population, we had community, and after community, we have ecosystem, and it continued that type of thing. I hope I didn't miss out anyone. So here, our best answer is going to be the organisms in a freshwater pond. Look at the word organisms. Now, there will be different types of organism, and if there are different types of organisms, then we're talking about different type of population. I remember that it's a combination of population that would, of course, make up a community. So our best answer for 56 is going to be D, as is selected here. Now, 57, which of the following statement is true about inorganic fertilizers? Now, look at inorganic. It's very important that you pay attention to these words. Inorganic. All right? Which is true. We want to know what is true. All right? So what is true about it is that it makes nutrients available more quickly. Now, inorganic fertilizer is going to be your NPK, the synthetic fertilizer that you purchase. Now, organic fertilizer would have been um, pretty much associated with the others, but your inorganic fertilizer is going to make nutrients available more quickly, more readily to the plant. So the best answer here for 57 is C. We move on to 58 and 59. Now, 58 and 9 refers to the following graph, which shows the growth pattern of several uh, populations. Now, this one I want you to pay attention to. A very, very, I really want you to look at this, and if your views are different, I really want you to leave it in the comment section uh, just below. Uh, we're looking at this, and this particular graph is somewhat related to what we call a sigmoid growth curve or the S-curve. So it says, in answering item 58 to 59, match the following statements about the population to one of the options above. Each option may be used once, more than once, or not at all. Now, 58 has a good food supply and is not, look at this word, not subjected to environmental stress, or you could say environmental resistance. And environmental stress and environmental resistance, these are going to be like competition, food, space, water, uh, predator disease, that type of thing. So which of these which would not be exposed to any of this? So let us look at this. Now, the best answer here is going to be B, because it shows what we call an unrealistic growth curve. And this unrealistic growth curve is showing that it is going up and showing no sign of environmental resistance. Now, the truth is, no curve can continue without some form of resistance. But this here, as this question asks, is showing that the most suitable answer would have been B. So remember, the question is asking, has a good food supply and is not subjected to environmental stress. Now we say that this one that shows what looks like a J curve, that unrealistic curve. So this is the best answer there. Let's look at the other one. Persons might have different views for this now. Uh, 59 has reached equilibrium and there is a delicate balance between the rate of birth and the rate of death. I chose C, and this is what, why I chose C. Now, if you look here, this graph is coming up with a nice F, log phase, log phase, experimental, and that type of thing here. Now, if you look at this graph here, let us go through this graph. Right about here, it is experiencing or uh, going through the carrying capacity. So this is the carrying capacity, it's a straight line coming across. And going right across here, the curve starts to show some amount of environmental resistance. And what you will find happening is that it will 
should I say, fluctuate, create this trough and this thing going here, where you have it dying off and coming back and that type of thing. So this is where you have this delicate balance. See it? It overshoot, die back, overshoot, die back, that type of thing. So for me, I'm thinking here, here it is facing environmental resistance. We use these arrows to show the environmental resistance. So it's facing environmental resistance. And as such, it is no longer taking on this J appearance. It is now showing that it is leveling off. This is just where it can survive. All right, so what is going to happen is going to uh, fluctuate about carrying capacity right here. So for me, it is C. All right, right there, it is C. Not, the, not B, but C. All right, so there we have it. Has reached equilibrium, and equilibrium for me is the carrying capacity. And there is a delicate balance, and the delicate balance I said is this wave like movement above this that you're going to experience right here all right so if your views are different feel free to leave your comment in the comment section below this video now 60 is our last question for this paper which of the following organisms are most important in biodegradation this is a very nice question uh, we are looking at two things, and both are responsible for biodegradation, breaking down things. We have the earthworm, which we refer to as a detritivore, right? They feed on what we call detritus, and they are breaking down stuff as well. And uh, we have bacteria, which we refer to as decomposer. But in most cases, after the earthworm would have worked on whatever it's working on, then the bacteria still would have to do some work. So our best answer here is going to be a for 60. So bacteria is the answer for 60. Now this takes us to the end of our, of our answers and explanation for the 2013 CXC CSEC biology pass paper, multiple choice one. I have some advice for persons who have just watched my explanation uh, do remember that as you go through this paper and you listen to my explanation, feel free to consult your textbook to, to ensure that we are all in line. One, remember that when you look at these questions, you are supposed to read every single thing on the paper like I did. Ensure that you read every single thing on the paper. Make sure you look at all suggested answers, A, B, C, D, that type of a thing, and make sure that you understand why you're choosing the answer that you have chosen, all right? You want to make sure that you are not trying to say the, the answer for this question is A and the answer for this question is B. No. A and B is just a representation of the answer. So if we were supposed to look at question 60, I would say bacteria. But you might see this question again looking like this. But however, the suggestions as answer might be different. Or you might see this very same suggestion for answers and there's a slight difference in the question. So you want to ensure that you're reading the questions well you are looking at your answers well, and uh, most of all, most of all, ensure that you are studying. Most of all, ensure that you are studying. Please form your little learning communities. Now you can use technology to have your little meetings. Study in group. Share what you know. For those persons who are not doing so well, see how best you can bring them up with you. Teach them what you have learned. And always remember, if you are in doubt, use the technology that is available. You have YouTube, you have uh, Google, you have your textbook, and of course, you should have your teacher or a teacher that can assist you. Until next time, walk good. Now, remember... While you're walking good, on a Friday evening from 6 to 7, I have my biology live on YouTube that you can share in wherever you are, 
once you're doing the biology exam. My life is pretty much around the topic that I would have covered for the week. So you would have to be following my channel to see what videos I would be covering for that week. And then I'll provide explanation for the videos or further explanation for those videos as would have been ex expected in your class. So if you didn't have a class because of whatever the limitations are, you can just link me up on a Friday evening, YouTube Live on my channel, uh, and of course, we could go through those topics that we have been covering for the week. All right? Today, I'm looking at the 2014 CXC CSEC Biology Pass paper, multiple choice. Of course, that is paper number one. Question one. A plant which has reduced leaves with no chlorophyll, lacks a proper rooting system, and flowers abundantly is most likely to be found. And my answer is going to be B, living parasitically on another plant. If a plant lacks chlorophyll, lacks proper rooting system, however, it is flowering abundantly, then the nutrients would have had to be obtained from somewhere. So I think the most appropriate answer would have been B. Item two, reference to the following food chain, which shows the feeding relationship in a freshwater habitat. Microscopic algae, mosquito larvae, small fish, large fish. The organism to which the least amount of energy is available is, I chose D, large fish. It is considered that as we move away from the producer, the energy available is being reduced by 10%. So by the time we get to the end of a food chain here, there will be but little energy for those organisms to use. Item three, reference to the following list. Number of legs, body temperature, shape of body, type of body covering. The dead remains of a previously unknown animal are found in a forest, which of the features listed above could be used to classify the animal? I chose C, number of legs, shape of body, type of body covering, because the organism would be dead, so you would not get a true representation of the organism's temperature. Which of the following type of bacteria is important for returning nitrogen gas to the atmosphere. Denitrifying bacteria, and that comes straight from your nitrogen cycle. You could have a look at it. Question number five. A mature plant cell is different from a mature animal cell because a plant cell has a large permanent vacuole. I chose C. A large vacuole is pretty much confined to plant cells and not animal cells. Animal cells would have small vacuole. Six. In a comparison between osmosis and diffusion, which of the following statements is not true? And I underlined not true because you need to pay attention to that. Both processes require energy to move particles across a concentration gradient. I chose B, as osmosis and diffusion are both passive transport and energy would not be required to do their work. Question number seven. Which of the following organelles is the site of aerobic respiration? 
Mitochondria in his aura is going to be correct, so I chose D. The cytoplasm is the site for anaerobic respiration, and nucleus and chloroplast would have been out of this list. Item 8 refers to the following diagram, which represents the metabolic process carried out in plants. Now, we look at the diagram here, water, light, carbon dioxide is needed. It says it's a plant cell, chlorophyll, of course, is there in the chloroplast, and the cell is giving off oxygen and food. Now, the food produced is starch. Starch is usually stored in the leaf of plants, with the exception of onion and skeleton that would be storing reducing sugar. My answer here is going to be B. Nine, which of the following is not an autotroph? Autotrophs are organisms which make their own food, so the fungi would not be an autotroph. It would be an heterotroph. So my answer there is going to be A. All the others would be making their own food food. We move on to question number 10. Question number 10. We're looking at leaves. Item 10 refers to the following experiment. A green and white variegated leaf is exposed to sunlight for three hours and then tested for starch. The results for the tests are shown in the diagram below. Here we have one leaf with green color and white color, and the other leaf shows after the experiment, the green area is now changed to blue-black. The white area takes the color of the iodine. Now, the question is asked, and based on the experiment, which of the following condition is necessary for photosynthesis? Now, the condition necessary for photosynthesis is going to be chlorophyll. If you observe the white area that is lacking in chlorophyll, they not change color to show the positive test for starch, which is blue-black. 11. When enzymes are boiled, they are unable to function. This is because an increase in temperature. Now, the increase in temperature is going to denature the protein of the enzymes. Hence, I chose C. Be reminded, enzymes are not organisms. Question number 12. Which of the following occurs as a result of deficiency of nitrogen in plants? Now, you're going to be having stunted chlorotic plants which reduce yield. Stunted chlorotic plants with reduce yield. So you're going to definitely have yielding of the leaf. And, of course, they are not going to be producing much of a food. The most suitable answer there would be B. And, again, this is like textbook answer. Not much processing required there. All right, 13. Which of the following is a function of a hydrochloric acid in the stomach? All right, it provides a medium for pepsin to work. Of course, you know pepsin and renin, they are in the stomach. And they were better at a acidic pH, right? A low pH. So um, hydrochloric acid would have been uh, acid, of course. So then it would have been a low pH for which is suitable for pepsin. Number 14, the role of respiration is best described as, I chose A, release of energy. That's pretty much the coolest definition for respiration. It is pretty much a release of energy from the food we eat. And, of course, that is stored in ATP. Fifteen. Item refers to the following graph, which shows the oxygen uptake of an athlete at rest during exercise and after a period of exercise, the recovery period. Now, we're looking at this graph, and we want to look at the y-axis. There is oxygen level, and on the x-axis, we have time. Now, the ice concentration of lactic acid in the athlete muscle occurs where? Now, here we would find the lactic buildup taking place just at the end there of exercise, where a whole lot of oxygen is being used up. So I chose B to be the answer for question 
15. Now we are on into question number 16. Number 16. Which of the following is not a reason for placing green plants in an aquarium? Now this question seems to be one of those questions that continue to repeat from time to time. 16. My answer there is C. Removing chlorine from the water. Of course, the plant could remove the, could be a food for the organism, could, of course, provide oxygen, and could, of course, remove waste had it been carbon dioxide. So, of course, C is going to be the most suitable answer. 17. Which of the following is an effect of nicotine found in cigarette smoke? Increase heart rate and this again is a very popular question that's what nicotine does and it's like textbook UK. it's right there in your textbook and it will be explicitly stated as it is here 18 the right ventricle collects blood from the uh, be careful here it's the right ventricle so you want to make sure that you remember the parts of the heart the right ventricle is of course connected to the right atrium so please don't make a mistake to say that your answer is going to be vena cover. Of course, it's going to be C, the right atrium. And we move on down to question number 19. An amoeba obtains all the oxygen it needs by diffusion via its cell membrane, while humans need to have a special respiratory surface for this process. The best reason for this difference is that I chose D, Human surface area to volume ratio. That is why we are not able to do like the amoeba. So our answer for 19 is going to be D. 20 refers to the following diagram, which shows the longitudinal section of a stem of a plant. Now, the part label X is the companion cell and the companion cell is of course found on the phloem all right so that again is a pretty easy one for most persons 21 under which condition will the rate of respiration in plants be highest of course i chose b sunny and high windy day or sunny and high wind speed of course, your rate of transpiration is going to increase. So 21 is going to be B, sunny and high wind speed. 22, mineral salts in plants are transported mainly through the xylem vessel. Remember, it's a xylem vessel that is acting from the root upward, taking our water and mineral salt. So we are up in on now to question 23. Now, storage organ in plants provide for vegetative reproduction, for development of embryo, to ensure survival when nutrient is scarce. So my answer for 23 is going to be D. And that, again, doesn't require much explanation as all those are true. 24. Which of the following is not a form of excretion in plants carbon dioxide diffusing in through the stomata of course it's going in so definitely could be excretion and of course the carbon dioxide getting into the plant there is to enhance the or facilitate the process of photosynthesis 25 refers to the following diagram of mammalian kidney and there we have it nicely Label the cortex, the medulla, the pelvis, that type of a thing. In to which of the structure is urine empty? Of course, it is going to be in the pelvis, so that's going to be C or 3 on the diagram. We're moving on to question 26. 26, which of the following organ is most directly affected when the pituitary gland is malfunctioning it's going to be the kidney because you'd understand that the kidney regulates the water in the blood and the of course pituitary gland has a whole lot to do with that secretion of adh 
27. Which of the fallen is not a feature of a leaf of a zero fight? Of course, stomata abundant on the upper surface. Not even in a regular leaf, there is stomata abundant on the upper surface. It is usually abundant on the lower surface. So the answer here, it is going to be A for 27. So we move on to 28. The main function of a cartilage at the end of long bone is to reduce friction. So, so our the main function of cartilage at the end of long bone is to reduce friction. So the answer there is going to be B. That again is textbook. 29, which of the following correctly describes movement in plants? We could think about this one. Uh, growth movement is usually irreversible. So that bit is true. And of course, movement are part. So C is going to be our answer. Locomotion is something that is confined to animal while movement is popularly used with plants. So we could say a plant move and it is irreversible. Uh, a growth or it moves pretty much part. The limbs swaying or closing as would have been the shame old lady plant. We're going on to question 30. It refers to the following diagram which shows the structure of a typical vertebra. And it is nicely labeled as would have been in the textbook. Which of the following shows the correct labeling of the parts? I have chosen C. So three would have been the neural canal. Uh, four would have been the centrum. And two, of course, would have been the transverse process. And this is a recall question. It's coming directly from the text. 31, which of the following is not true of locomotion? And what's not true, I chose D. It is a characteristic of all living things. So here we have it. Uh, if you were supposed to compare 29 and 30, locomotion is not, uh, of course, true for all living things. Some would just move like a tree would. Question 32. Refers to the following results of an investigation of how wood lights respond to light and moisture. The results show the number of wood lights that move to varying condition, light, dark, moist, and dry. The above responses are important to the wood lice in order to, I chose B, ensure that they do not become dehydrated. Now you understand if they are exposed to this dry condition with their body type, they will become dehydrated, dried out, and of course, too much light, they are not really adapted for that. They are usually under dark areas. That's just pretty much their type of habitat. Item three refers to the following diagram which shows a coordinated response to a stimulus in human. So the stimulus is at X, and the coordinating center is at Y and the response is at Z. The role of Y in the illustration above is to interpret changes in the environment. So I chose D for my answer. For a student to recall his biology notes, action takes place in the cerebrum. Now that is the frontal lobe of the brain for which conscious thought takes place. The cerebellum is for balancing. So, of course, it couldn't be the cerebellum. All right, 35. Which hormone causes a person to show superhuman, enhanced strength, 
in an emergency situation. We say in Jamaica, when trouble take your pitney shot fit you, the scientists say it is the adrenaline that would cause this type of a response. So we chose B for the answer, which is adrenaline. 36, which three structures of the skin are involved in temperature regulation? Now, the sweat gland is going to be a part of this because sweat is leaving the body with heat. Then the erectile muscle, which controls the ear follicle on the skin. And of course, you know, the ear will stand to trap AIR on the skin or it will lower pretty much just to keep the skin uh, cool. Then we have the capillaries, which will flow close to the skin if it's hot and deeper down into the skin if it is cool. So my answer for 36 is going to be A. 37, the function of the choroid layer in the eye is to, uh, quickly we know that the choroid is to nourish the eye, but here our answer is going to be B as it prevents internal reflection. And that again is going to be textbook. It does both. Let's move on now to question 38. And that refers to the following diagram of a section through a joint. And what it wants to be answered is which of the above label component reduce friction. And this one is going to be another nice and easy dandy. Uh, it's going to be B. Uh, we're looking at the cartilage here. And here, with, between here, we're going to have some synovial fluid um, assisting with that. So the cartilage and the synovial fluid is going to be reducing that friction. So, of course, our answer is going to be B for 38. We move on to 39. Uh, it refers to the following growth curve for an instar during one stage of its life cycle. Now, this is a wonderful question. At which point does molting occur? Now, molting different animals experience or show molting differently, right? And at molting, there is somewhat uh, a dormancy and then a takeoff. So I chose C, which is this section here of a graph, to say that this is where molting would have been taking place because the animal would have been shedding uh, some part of its body or changing out something there just to move on to the next stage. So it's somewhat so dormancy. So you'll see some dormancy taking place here. And then zoop, it's all off again. We move on to question 40. Question 40 refers to the following activities involved in the menstrual cycle. I like this question, and usually the menstrual cycle falls into the null curriculum. Now, the important thing about this question is to understand at what point does the menstrual cycle begin. So I chose C. It says that development of the graphian follicles, after which we are going to be having the repair of the uterus lining. And then we are going to have ovulation taking place, and then you are going to have shedding of the uterine wall, and that is what some person would call the menstruation, or they have other names to call it. So pretty much a menstrual cycle begins right after the menstruation there. So it's very important that you understand that, that you can pick up on what is happening first, second, third, that type of thing. So for 40, the answer is going to be C. For 41, it refers to the following diagram of a flower. And the question asks is, which of the labeled parts is responsible for the production of male gametes. That's going to be the answer. So our answer here is always going to be B. And this, of course, is straightforward pretty much from any textbook that shows the flower. At 42, 42 refers to the following diagram. And of course, this again is a familiar diagram. The most appropriate heading for this diagram is going to be 
fertilization. And of course, it's going to be fertilization because that's what it's called in the textbook and that is what is happening in the diagram. Uh, 43. During pollination, pollen grains, which are small, light, odorless, and smooth, are most likely carried by the wind. And again, this is pretty much the characteristic of this type of a pollen grain. And it's textbook. You can learn this. You can study this as if you were studying your notes. 44, contraception is used primarily to limit the size of a family. So taking your birth contraceptive, of course, they will limit the size of your family. They will, of course, reduce or maintain a relatively sustainable population size. 45. Which of the following statement is true of wind dispersed seed? They are found in succulent fruits. My answer there is going to be D. They have feathery ears which allow them to be taken great distance. And of course, they are just floating in the wind. Then we have 46. Which of the following events does not occur during mitosis? That's chromatid exchanging genetic information. This process takes place in meiosis, not in mitosis where we have crossing over in meiosis. 47, in which of the following does meiosis occur? C is our answer here, the testes of mammal. Remember, it is the haploid number of chromosomes that is been passed on, so meiosis definitely will have to take place where the number can be half. 48, a girl has blood group A and her brother has blood group B. Her mother is blood group AB, heterozygous. They both have the same father. Which of the following are possible genotype of a father? For this particular question, once you would have done adequate practice with your genetic cross, you can either choose to start just randomly pull something from the list that is here, and that would nicely help you to cross. Uh, so if you look at my little genetic, my Punnett square here, I tried both. It's not a mix-up because I'm doing both. So the first thing I went with was with O because I know that O is somewhat recessive. So my answer to 48 is going to be D where I chose the heterozygous here and the recessive O here. And that would return me the type of offspring that um, was mentioned. So here we have B, O, and we have... A, O, that type of thing. When that is happening, you are definitely, if it's the heterozygous, we're just going to talk about the dominant. So if it's A, O, or B, O, we're just going to say B, R, O. 49. A plant breeder grows a new variety of tomato, which has desirable characteristics. To develop this variety, he sometimes enclosed single flower in bags, which of the following is most likely a reason for this? I chose D, to prevent entry of pollen from other plants. You want to maintain that purebred quality, so you really don't want external interference. Question 50, which of the following is an ecological implication of genetic engineering? Ecological implication? Loss of biodiversity. Now, loss of biodiversity, you would understand that there are animals or uh, organisms that obtain their nutrient differently. If you think about the panda bear with that diet of bamboo, if we have limited biodiversity, it could impact, of course, medication. It could impact how other organisms feed and all that bit. You can relate to the fact of a food web or a food chain and, of course, different organisms have. Different feeding desire. 51. In which of the following ways can hypertension be treated or controlled? Eating iron-rich food, low-carbohydrate diet, low-salt intake, exercise. I went for exercise 
and low salt intake. So it's going to be C, which is, of course, exercise and low salt intake. Of course, you wouldn't have to worry about the concentration of the blood too much and the blood trying to send uh, uh, pump quickly, get water and all of that in order to maintain that concern internal environment. So just reduce the salt exercise so that you can burn that extra fat to stay healthy. Uh, 52, abuse of prescription drug is considered a disease because... It affects the functioning of the body. So that which affects the normal functioning of the body, um, usually it is referred to as, of course, a disease, right? Because on a normal day, your body will be functioning normally. So if you look at, of course, any disease, it affects the functioning of the body. 53, which are the following is a sign of AIDS. Again, here, you will have to be looking at the symptoms of AIDS and the signs of AIDS. Of course, remember, symptoms are those that the uh, patient usually tell us, and signs are those that we can detect or we can see. So a fever, you would detect a, a fever, but of course, a rash you'd be able to see. So I chose B for 53. 54, a vector is defined as an organism that transmits disease organisms all right and that is textbook that's what a vector does so the answer here is going to be d for 54 55 a boy stepped on a nail in the garden he is rushed to the hospital where he is given antiserum this provides, the answer is A, it provides artificial passive immunity. Passive immunity is a short-term immunity which results from the introduction of that antiserum uh, from another person or animal here to treat with the nail joke. So here it's going to be A. 56. A group of fish, snail, water grass, and tadpole lives in a freshwater pond may be described as community because it's a group of different species living together and, of course, it adds up to a community. 57. The mark release capture technique would most likely be used to determine the population of snail in a vegetable plot. Here it is going to be D. All right, snail are those slow moving stuff, and you want to know if you are able to capture them, um, recapture them, and that type of thing. Now, this is the most suitable answer here for 57. 58 refers to the following graph. Which graph best represents changes in population density of a natural animal population with respect to time? It's always going to be C for the answer, and it is graph 3. Um, you'd understand that a population um, inhabiting anywhere, it will take on this S-curve model as soon as it starts to face environmental resistant, you will have this type of a crest being formed, showing that organisms are dying, and then we, of course, have birth. And of course, all this is happening right about that which we call the carrying capacity of the environment, and its carrying capacity speaks to the area at which the organisms can operate at optimum in that environment. 59, which of the following is not an example of renewable energy resource? Of course, oil is not a renewable energy. The more we use oil, it is depleted, and it just doesn't come back anytime soon, or it's not coming back. So oil is going to be our answer there. And the final question, 60, which of the following practices does not help 
to conserve the environment. And that's going to be overgrazing, allowing the animals to eat too much from one place. Then that is going to rip away all the vegetative covering and leave the soil bare for sheet erosion, and then gully erosion, and then real erosion, that type of a thing. So this is going to be our, our final response, overgrazing. So the answer for 60 is going to be A. Until we meet again, I encourage you, if this is your first time around, to become a member of the CSEC Biology, the cover page. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be informed when there is a new publication. I want you to also like, give me a like if you like what we presented, and I want you to also share so that other persons can benefit and become a part of this intellectual community. I want to also remind you that on a Friday evening uh, for the rest of 2020, we are going to be having our Biology HSB live session between 6 in the evening to 7. We are covering the topics that we would have covered on the page for the week. So for this evening, we are going to be looking at characteristics of living things. We are going to be looking at cells. We are definitely going to be looking at microbes. And we are going to be inviting persons over who are sitting in the C-Sec HSB and the CSEC biology exams. I want you to tell me in the comment section what time of the week, what time of the day would have been best for us to have a live for you based on where you are. So if you are, for, for example, in Jamaica, you could say I'm in Jamaica and the live would have been better for me if we had it at 5 to 6 instead of 6 to 7.